We're in the Musée du Louvre, and we're looking at Gros's massive canvas and Napoleon at the Pest House at Jaffa. We're clearly not in Paris. No, this is the Middle East, and what's happening is the forces under Napoleon are fighting the British, and in doing so, they came into contact with the plague. What Napoleon has done with his soldiers that have contracted plague is to put them in a kind of quarantine in a makeshift hospital in a mosque in Jaffa, and according to the story, visited them in 1799. This painting was made five years later and is a really romantic and somewhat sanitized view of apparently what really happened. Because by the time Napoleon commissions this, Napoleon is emperor of France, where he had been just the general of the army when it actually happened. But Napoleon obviously recognizes the enormous value of art as propaganda and so shows himself almost Christ-like visiting this makeshift hospital, disregarding the doctors and the fellow soldiers around him who are saying, cover your mouth, don't breathe in the air here, this is very contagious. And he walks through Christ-like, unafraid of contagion, and even touches the sores of one of the plague victims. Now, Gro has actually borrowed directly from the Belvedere in his rendering of Napoleon. So Napoleon is functioning as both Christ-like and borrowing directly from the greatest classical tradition. The story itself is actually apparently a, a really nasty one because there were reports that Napoleon had actually forced his sick troops to drink laudanum in order to kill them. And the other part of the story is that Napoleon had the prisoners that he had taken in battle bayoneted in part because he didn't want to have to be slowed down by them and he didn't want to wait his gunpowder on them. So we have none of that sense of the truth of battle and war here. No, this is pure propaganda. This is pure propaganda for Napoleon, who makes himself look like a divine leader. When I said at the beginning, this isn't Paris, I said that in part because this would have looked very foreign and exotic to the viewers at the Paris Salon in 1804. Clearly Islamic architecture, clearly a very far away place, figures wearing turbans and exotic clothing. In a way, part of the appeal of this painting was its exoticism and the beginnings really of Orientalism. It's interesting to see how Gro has handled the composition. You have the figures in the foreground, a kind of stage set that is really organized by the architecture and by that frieze of the Islamic arches that you, you had mentioned. And then, of course, we have this extraordinary expanse beyond it. We have the figures that have died or that are terribly sick in the shadows. And, of course, Napoleon is lit by the sun. And we have that feeling of kind of Caravaggio lighting, extremes of light and dark, of strong, dramatic contrast in light, and that borrowing from Baroque art that we see in Romanticism. This is early for Romanticism, but still we've clearly left Neoclassicism behind, and we see artists beginning to take on these contemporary subject matter at the request of Napoleon, who wants to document his rule and to use art as a kind of way to aggrandize himself. He is hero, home, and abroad.